Morning, everyone. Happy Sabbath. Welcome to SDEX Live Worship. Uh, thank you for joining us on time today. So, uh, before we go into our praise and worship, we would like to make one announcement that all of you have been waiting for. So, we will be resuming service, face to face worship on 7th of November. And so, for those of you who have not registered for this face to face worship, please do uh, email Pastor James or message the WhatsApp, SDEC WhatsApp number. And for those of you who have already registered, we have already taken note of you, so uh, please do not worry about it. And also, um, yeah, uh, and please be, um, please keep, um, um, look at the emails and also be updated on how we will distribute the tickets later on for 7th of November. So now as we go into the time of worship, praise and worship, let us all cast our worries to God and also spend this time to connect with Him.
So now it's time for our tithes and offerings. So as you can see on the screen, uh, please scan the QR code and it will lead you to AdventistGiving.sg. So now let us take a time to return the blessings that we have received. Let us bow our heads. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this blessed Sabbath day. We want to pray for the offerings that we have given, that they will be used for your good work and be used to spread um, your love as well. Be with those who are strug struggling financially now and let them know that you are by their side in this difficult time. Help us all to grow stronger in faith and to continue to hold on to the hope of your second coming. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
to go down Here I am to say that you're my God You're altogether lovely Altogether worthy Altogether wonderful to me Yes Hi, I'm Nat. I'm here with the young adults today. And as we prepare for our prayer, may we sing a few words to the Lord as we prepare ourselves to speak to Him. Once again, come together and worship you on this blessed Sabbath day to rest from our duties during the week and the troubles that we may have faced. We thank you for your unending blessings, Lord, for your mercies, for the peace that you have given us in this time of uncertainty and for being with us every step of the way this week. As we continue with our service, Lord, I'd like to first of all pray for our pastor, I thank you, for Lord, for blessing this church with the shepherd, for giving us a pastor. Thank you for keeping him in your care and his family as well. May you anoint his lips and bless his message as he continues to preach to us and to guide us along our spiritual journey with you. This week as a church, we would like to lift up uh, Nilma, Vincent uh, Boziak and their two children, Etienne and Celia. Lord, you have blessed them. You have made them a young family, a nuclear family the basis of the foundation of our community and our church. We continue to bless them, to keep your eyes on them, and that they may one day serve you as well in your church. I would like to also pray for our congregation, wherever they may be, wherever they're worshipping you. Some of them have worries, have doubts, have fears. May you listen to their hearts, Lord, answer their prayers, and provide your guidance, your wisdom, and your knowledge wherever they need it. So we thank you, Lord, for listening to our prayers and for answering them in your own time. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The scripture reading for today is found in John chapter 14, verse 16. Jesus told him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one can come to the Father except through me. Welcome back to Church ASDAC. Thank you for joining us on our online service, our virtual gathering. And as you've heard, if you join us from 11 o'clock onwards from our presider, Daniel, that the, the light at the end of the tunnel is getting closer and closer. 
You know, during this whole six to seven months, you know, it fe- I felt like I was uh, journeying through the Exodus, the whole book of Exodus, from the pandemic to becoming like the ten plagues to fighting for freedom, getting out into the wilderness, into the midst of uncertainty, to not knowing where and how we will get to Canaan. But I think we're a lot closer to Canaan now than before. Thank God it doesn't take, didn't take us 40 years to get to where we're supposed to go. So we are reaching the point where possibly, if everything continues to be the way it is, that we'll be moving to phase three with more relaxation of the rules. But the church has to plan ahead to get ready for anything that, that will change. Um, and so we are trying and we're restarting. Uh, in fact, some of the branches have already restarted because they have uh, more uh, capacity to do that. But we have to move forward in faith. And so on the 7th of November, I'm announcing that we'll begin our hybrid service on the 7th of November. That's the first Sabbath of November. So what you need to do will be that you need to reserve a ticket. You need to reserve a ticket beforehand, and we'll be reserving some of those tickets that's available for the people that, you know, the elderly, those who are needy, who do not have internet connection at home. We'll be reserving tickets for them first, and then we'll open it up to the rest of you. So far, so far, I haven't had a lot of new registration, but there's about 20 odd of you that's interested in coming back to church physically for worship. I will give you more detail next Sabbath as I make announcement on the specifics of registering for the tickets and what will happen on the actual day. And then the Sabbath afterwards, on the 31st of October, I will give you even more details. But don't worry, the details will come to you in the WhatsApp message, in the email, and through the people, for those of you who are not connected, who may not be even even hearing this right now, from those of you who have been trying to Uh, support you during this time, they will pass those information to you. So don't worry. If you want to come back, we'll try to make it possible for you to come back. And look at the numbers of people who are interested to come back. I think as that can handle. We'll be capping. So this is clear. We'll be capping the number of people back in church on the 7th of November until the end of November, until we do another review. We'll be starting and capping it at 30 people present at church. 30 worshippers who are physically worshipping together in the ASDAC building. That does not count the helpers, of course, but for those attendees who will be coming to worship physically on the 7th of November, we'll be capping it at 30. We'll be capping it at 30. So in light of that, also I still need you to let me know if you're interested to come back so that we can plan ahead. So for those of you who have already registered, you do not need to register again. You do not need to register again. We've already taken note and we put it in our database. But those of you who have not registered so far, and now you think, okay, I feel safer. I feel like the, the whole COVID in Singapore is under control and I'm interested to come back. This is not a confirmation of the ticket. It's an expression of interest. Then you can register the, uh, through the WhatsApp message, through the broadcast or through the email that we'll be sending out in the coming week. All right? So please register if you're interested and then look out for the actual in, uh, email, they'll come up for the reservation of ticket, okay? So for those of you who are supporting the elderly folks, for those of them who don't have internet at home, please let them know that we've reserved tickets for them. But for those of you who are concerned, who are in the, maybe what, the vulnerable group, the 65 and above, who are interested to come back, do know that you can, you can. The government has not, uh, has taken away any restrictions on that. You can come back if you choose to. In fact, some of you who were reserving the ticket specially for are in that group. But there are some others who have expressed your concern. Do note that the government have removed restrictions on those who are above 65 to come back for physical worship. But just be careful. Just be careful. Take care of yourself. Make sure the transport is, is straightforward. You don't have to take public transport if possible. If you take public transport, uh, I'm suggesting that you take a grab or a taxi straight to church and straight back home. So you don't have to go through the MRT or the bus and all that, uh, exposing yourself to unnecessary danger. So that's my announcement for the resumption of service on the 7th of November. Do pass the word around because I've had to clarify that it's not, we're not resuming to 100 people with uh, unlimited space. Uh, That is not correct and that is not accurate. We're only opening up to 30 people and those people will have to 
pre-register. Pre-register, reserve your ticket, and those without tickets will not be allowed to come in on that day, unfortunately, because we just don't have the space to cater for that. So please pass the word around to clarify that. Okay, the next announcement is that the devotionals that every year we provide, uh, the conference provides to all the churches, all our members, is available again for the next year, for 2021. If you would like to order your devotional, because we're not gathering physically just yet, do note that you can do it through the online portal. The QR code is there, and in fact, for those of you who are in our WhatsApp broadcast, I've already sent out this uh, information to you. The information will also be available on our Facebook page. So for those of you who in past years have purchased this devotional, which is available for all age groups in, uh, in, uh, in the family, you can make the purchase online digitally, and it will be made available uh, to the church, and we'll distribute it out to you as we've done with the Sabbath school lesson. So for those of you who are interested in ordering the devotional for 2021, do know that you can start ordering right now and make the whole uh, process, purchase, uh, and all that online via the QR code that's made available and the website is there. So go on, go ahead and order it and the instructions are there. If you need to clarify, you want to order, and you're not so sure how to do that, do contact me and I'll help you out with that. Next, we will be showing you a video on an initiative that the whole conference is participating in. And that is in the conference-wide Pay it forward at home initiative. I'll let the video explain itself to you as we watch it, and uh, we'll talk about bit, a, a little bit more about it after the video. Low income families are the hardest hit during this COVID 19 pandemic. Those barely scraping through during the ordinary times are struggling to put food on their table as they face reduced income and layoffs. But thanks to kind donors in previous years, Pay it Forward is able to consistently deliver help to many of these low-income families since 2009. To date, our programs has been able to provide benefits to almost 5,400 low-income residents and 169 families by providing them with free meals, with food hampers, with grocery vouchers, and even regular health screening. But as the pandemic drags on, we need to ramp up our support. And this year, in November 15, we plan to benefit 700 low-income families with a $50 NTUC voucher and also $30 worth of personal care items and healthy food items. We will be distributing your gift to those in need. For those staying in Yuhua, Momin, Gelang Sirai, and even Topayo East. Additionally, we will be providing support to distressed domestic workers living in shelters. If you have been blessed in any small way, I urge you, forward your blessing to those in need. What's more, every dollar that you give counts because it will be doubled by a government matching fund. Send a blessing. Pay for today. Well, as the video has, has shown that we are trying to continue supporting those who are in need in Singapore. And you know, some of us have gone through the pandemic for about seven months and we've, we've gone maybe tired and, um, you know, you may even have like... Uh, gone exhausted from all these different things that's been hitting you by working from home and, and just being restricted in your freedom. But let us not forget that there are still people in need and they have not disappeared. The church is, as there, is specifically involved in the group that is um, there. Are, you know, we all know that we've been helping those who are uh, in the dorms and also there's a Lydon's home that we've been supporting. So we will be also uh, forwarding some of this uh, help to them as per what's uh, allowed, because um, there are some restrictions still around, and thankfully the numbers have gone down, and I believe we can do more, and let us continue to do what we can to support those who are in need. Let us not forget them as our lives start to resume to a kind of a new normal that we just leave them behind. They're still with us, and we still need to help them out, and there's a need for all of us to remember that. So if you're 
able to provide some support and you're able to pay forward some of the gift and blessings you've received, please um, go to the website, uh, go to our, our SDAC Facebook page. I'll make all this information available for you to donate and support them. I'd like to, in, in this time, thank those of you who have supported the initiative in either SDAC or the conference throughout these few months. You know, SDAC's been trying to support them and we've been spending a lot of money in purchasing stuff that they need and giving financial support to many people. But I can tell you that we have not gone to a place where we, are, we have no more funds to, to help others. You know, you've continually donated to the fund that we've used to support them. And even after these seven months, I looked at the fund and we're like, God has provided. God has provided and continues to provide to all the needs that He has brought into our attention. So let us not turn a blind eye for God has established His church for a time like this. So I'll share with you a little bit about the new series we're going we're gonna to be embarking on. We've talked uh, about the kingdom of God through the book of Matthew, but right now I'm going to go and answer some of these questions that we've been asking ourselves. And today we're going to start off with the fundamental question of who is God? You know, right now all of us are waiting. We are waiting for the COVID-19 vaccine. You know, it's as though it's our source of hope for life to resume to normality. We're hoping that the vaccine, whichever country, whichever out of the, uh, the vaccine out there that's being tested, that we will find one that is safe and that is available to all humanity. And with that, we hope that we can go back to the life that we once enjoyed. We've placed our hope on this vaccine that we're going to, some of us are going to struggle with it because we're not sure whether we want to take it. Is it safe? Is it, do we rush through it? Is the process something that we can trust? But I think in the midst of all this, because we've been locked down by this pandemic for so long that we are desperate, that we'll be willing to do anything. Just a few days ago, there was an announcement that made a lot of people really excited. That is the establishment of the travel bubble between Singapore and Hong Kong. And for travelers going both directions, there'll be no quarantine. And so what happened after that? Within the day, the ticket prices that fly, that fly from Singapore to Hong Kong and Hong Kong to Singapore jumped by 40%. Like people are desperate to get out, especially for people like us in Singapore and Hong Kong, where there's nowhere we can really travel to that is, not, that is within the country. And so people are desperate to, to just, just find a way to resume life as before. And even um, I heard about the cruise. You know, we were, people were worried beforehand because of the previous cases of the cruise of the Princess Diamond. I'm thinking, you know, Singapore's resuming the cruise to nowhere. And will that work? Will people sign up? Wow, within one day, one day, the first cruise that's available in November, six, I think, um, 6,000 people signed up. One day, 6,000. We want to get out. But I think it's easy for us that as we focus on the seemingly fixed magic potion, silver bullet called the vaccine to miss the real point behind our freedom. It is not the vaccine that will give us freedom. It is actually the, what the vaccine can provide in a way to us, and that is our personal health. You know, it's so easy to look at the exterior, the source of, 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 of solution, they forget that ultimately the fundamental thing that actually guarantees our safety and our freedom is not the vaccine, but our personal health. If you're unhealthy, the vaccine will do you no good. If your core is not strong enough, no vaccine can give you the freedom. You know, as we describe a person, we ask ourselves, who is this person? And, and you know, when you go out into a socializing uh, environment, people ask you, oh, hey, introduce yourself. How do you introduce yourself? And for James, is I have a few things that I use to introduce myself. I am, first of all, a husband. You know, I say, oh, I'm James. I, my wife is Tiffany. So I embrace the role that I am James, the husband. And over the years, uh, three years, in fact, after my, our marriage, I, my role changed and there was another role attached to my role. I am now a father. I'm a father to Lucas, my son. 
So how else would I introduce myself? Before I got married, before I had my son, I'm also, I was also a son. I was also a son. I defined myself by being the son of my mom and dad. In fact, that was how people defined me for the longest time. Oh, you are Pastor Joseph Tom's son. I'm like, yes, by the way, I have a name. It's called James. And then, then, then after I got married, I, I got dual status as a son. I'm a son and also a son-in-law. I got another pair of parents, which I, I, I really love dearly. So that increased that. And then for the first time, I have more sisters because Tiffany have four other sisters. So I only had one older sister, but now I have five sisters. My, my sister and four sister-in-laws. And I became an uncle and a, a, to, to nephews, to nine nephews before Lucas. And I'm like, I've, I've never been an uncle, never had so many little kids in my life, but then I have to embrace that role, the new role. But I'm also a sibling. I am the middle child, and that explains a lot. All right? I have an older sister, I have a younger brother. But then how else do I ex- uh, explain myself or, 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 or tell people who I am? I'm also, maybe by my, what I do, I'm a, I'm a pastor. I'm a pastor. It's really interesting that as I bring out different part of who I am, people interact with me differently. You should see how many times that people will interact with me very normally as, I'm an, as if I'm a normal person, but the moment they hear I'm a pastor, that's as if a safe distancing distance they have to maintain. They will step back subconsciously. And I'm like, what? Is there this holy aura that push people away? But they do that. And uh, overseas, when we are doing some uh, co-pottering, selling books, it happens a lot when people find out who we are. I say, I'm a seminarian. Uh, there's one thing that always happens that I notice is if they're smoking or they're drinking, they will try to hide it. They try to hide it. I don't know why, but the moment they hear seminarian, oh, and like something in my role as a pastor makes people do funny things. But one of the roles that I, I love the most is that I'm a friend. I'm a friend to my buddies, and I have friends from different places around the world. And the photos will have one of my housemates that I, I lived with for a few years in uh, Andrews, and some of the, my, my really good friends. Uh, then Lionel, you see there, we traveled to LA together a couple of years ago. He's now our, my colleague in the conference. Uh, and then my two other good friends that's uh, living in California right now. So I'm also a friend. But fundamentally, ultimately, how do I introduce myself? Who am I? Well, the most basic way of introducing myself is, I'm James. I'm James Tom. That's my name. That's how you can call me. In fact, most of us are known by just our name. You know, people don't really bother nowadays. They don't bother finding out more about you. They just say, oh, you're James. Okay, you're James. Good, cool. But how about God? I think the, the, the way we define ourselves or we understand ourselves cannot be complete or we'll never be full until we truly understand who we are in relation to God. I introduced today's sermon with the start that I feel like we're going through the Exodus experience. And in Exodus was the first time where God had to reintroduce himself to the Israelites because they've lost connection with him. And I feel like we are at a place where what we know as church gathering Sabbath after Sabbath, coming for Sabbath school, having worship, having potluck, having community gathering, social gathering, having church camp, all those have been removed that we have to come and go get to know God and the church all over again. So who are we in relation to God? Well, in the Bible, in the book of Exodus, when God was telling Moses who he is, he simply explained himself as, I am. For us, it's, it's an incomplete sentence. I am a son. I am a brother. I am a friend. I am a pastor. But for God, He doesn't need all this exterior status or definition to define who He is because He is the originator of everything. And so when God introduced Himself, He introduces Himself as, I am. But the Bible does give us a little clue of who God is by giving us His name. Names in the Bible tells you something about a person. They're not just identification marks. They actually explain quality and attributes of this person. And in the Bible, there is at least a hundred names for God. But today, I'm not going to go through a hundred names. 
I'm going to look at 12. The first name that most are familiar with, or especially in the Old Testament as you read the scripture, is Elohim. Elohim is not simply God. Elohim specifically describes God as my creator. Do note, it doesn't say a creator. It says my creator. Do you know God as your creator? Do you know God as the fundamental reason you are still alive today? Do you recognize that everything you have around you is due to His creative power and sustaining power as the Creator? Do you forget that He was the one that brought you into existence? I think as we go through this journey of reacquainting ourselves with God, we need to remind ourselves about who God is, that He is our Creator. In fact, when, when most of us introduce ourselves, when we introduce our name, we're actually acknowledging where we came from our origins. When I tell people I'm James, and then I give them my Chinese name, they realize, oh, you're interesting. You have an English name and a Chinese name. And your English name is a Christian name, but then your surname, tell me which clan you're from. And then straight away, if you are from the Chinese uh, group, if you know the surname Tam, there's only two groups we can come from. There's no other dialect group with, with the surname Tam. You're either Hakka, or Cantonese. And so sure people think, oh, are you Hakka or Cantonese? And in Singapore, it's very specific. The spelling for Tam with the H most likely suggests that you're Hakka. And without the H, you're most likely Cantonese. So if you try to trace where you're from, your origins, and our God's origin, our, our God's original definition is that He is the Creator. The next name that the Bible gives us about who God is, is His Yahweh. Or for some of you who read the old version of what He's used to call is Jehovah. Jehovah is a way of you trying to pronounce the word, with adding the word of Adonai into the, the character there. But most likely the most accurate, more accurate way of calling it is Yahweh. Yahweh claims that God is our Lord. He's not only our Creator, He's also our Lord. And I think that's an attribute that in modern society we've often forgot. That we think, we don't understand the idea of a Lord. What does it mean to have a Lord? It's not that you are tied down in chains to this person, but the Lord in ancient history has always been somebody where you submit to that person your loyalty because of an intense and strong bond of relationship, of trust. God says, I am Yahweh. God is also called El Shaddai. God is also called El Shaddai. El Shaddai tells us that God is not just a creator. He's not just our Lord. And I think for a lot of us, He's very important, especially during this pandemic, that for us to remind ourselves that He is our supplier, our provider. I said, James, I work hard to put food on my table. Where was God? How did He supply my needs? The government gave me grants. That's how I put food together for these few months. Or people donated money to me, and that's how I, 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 was at many, I managed to survive through this time. And whenever I meet people who ask me this question, I have to ask one very important thing. How is it that you can still eat? How is it that you can still walk? How is it that you still have health to go purchase groceries? It's easy for us to forget and take for granted. Our, even our ability to eat is a blessing from God. I've met people who've lost their ability to feed themselves. That's tough. Then they might have the right to ask questions. But for you and I, most of us in this time, although we have less, we still have a lot more than you can ever imagine. I was reading a story, an article that my friend sent me. There are groups of people right now in India where five people survive on one 
bowl of rice a day. How, many, how much rice do you eat today? Yesterday, the day before? Five people, one bowl of rice, one day. But then, yet they could still be thankful. That's the part of the article. They say, thank God I could still eat. Thank God I could still eat. God is also called Adonai, which is very similar to the word Yahweh. I share with you, He's my master. The master has a connotation that of more a servant-master relationship. I think we, it, modern Christians don't like to think about that. We don't like to think about God as our master. We like to think about God as our friend, as my Santa Claus, as my vending machine. But the Bible says He's my master. You know why? Because you and I who have accepted Jesus into our lives acknowledge the fact that He redeemed our life, that we were supposed to die and be condemned, but He saved us. But He's not the master that whips us with a, with a long whip and forces us to do work that is unreasonable and inhumane. He saves us and He calls us His servant, but not in the context of what human calls out a human. But as a master, He says, you are under my protection and God says, He's also Yahweh Jireh. Yahweh Jireh. He's the supplier, but He's also the provider. What's the difference, James? Isn't it the same? Always, when the term Yahweh Jireh is brought out, it's not just in a day-to-day -day living. When God brings out His personality or his name as Yahweh Jireh is always providing victory. Are you struggling through some things in your life right now? Are you feeling defeated by life circumstances, by your, 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 what you're going through right now, by your emotions? Are you defeated by your depressed state of existence, of your mind? Are you defeated by, because you've lost your job, you feel defeated, you feel useless, you feel like a loser? God is saying, I am Yahweh Jireh and I will provide you victory if you come to me and look for it on my terms and not your own. I think a lot of times when we go to God and says, God, provide me what I want, we ask God to provide what we want in our own definition and understanding of what the world is. But God is saying, that is not what you need. That's not the best thing for you. That's, if I give that to you, you're going to come back to this state very soon after. It's just a cycle that's going to go round and round and round. I want to get you out of it. I have a friend who, who was working with, on the streets with uh, druggies, you know, people who take drugs. And the most common question when he's out there on the streets with them is they ask him, hey man, do you have some money? Can you give me some spare change? He knows what they want. They, they're going to get a spare change. They're going to go buy some drugs. And, and for them, that to them is their understanding what is the most critical, important thing to them. He says, dude, if I don't get a drugs, I'm not going to be able to function. I'm not even able to go and work. So it's pointless that you try to help me out. So just give me some spare cash. Let me get some drugs so I can function and then I can get a job and my life will change and I will improve. My friend doesn't give them the spare cash. My friend doesn't give them the spare change. In fact, he brings them to a place where they are taught to get rid of the drug habit and they hate it. They hate the experience. In fact, he told me that some people he's brought to the place and have gone back up to the streets, he's brought into the place and have gone back up to the streets seven times. But for the very few who survived, who got rid of what they think they need and was provided with what they really was necessary to their life, their life was turned around. I feel like we're addicted to our needs, our personal definition of what our life would need in order for us to be happy, for us to be satisfied. We feel that there's certain things that if we pursue and we receive, that will define us and bring us the goal that we've been searching for. But God says, are you sure? Are you sure what you are seeking and spending your entire life chasing after? That will give you what you want. For some of us, it's the ideal dream job that we've been looking for. Uh, if I get the dream job, if I get into the career of my life, my life will be done. I'll be settled. Some of you were thinking that if you find a girl or the boy that I that's like that, if I find a perfect person, 
partner for my life, my life will be complete. For some of you, it's like, man, if I have the kids, if I have that number of kids in my life, my life will be done and I'll be good, I'll be happy. For some of you, man, if I, if I plan to, if I get to go on this round-the-world trip, if I experience all these things that I've been longing to experience all my life, if I do that, I'll, my joy will be complete. For some of you, it's having that final reconciliation with that family member that you have have this strained relationship for years. So if only if I reconcile with that person, my life will be complete. For some of you, if I get out of this sickness, this illness in my life, if I'm healed of that, I'll be, my life will be complete. And for some of you, man, that's like if I get to have the freedom financially to do whatever I want, whenever I want it, I'll be happy and complete. All these are needs defined by our personal human perception of life. I think this pandemic has shown us how quickly everything can change. This past week, I was having Bible studies with two two boys, and we're we're looking at heaven. And one of the key things that we looked at heaven was that God uses the thing we chase after to pave the roads. People say, oh, heaven's like roads of gold. God didn't do it to make it beautiful. I, I really personally don't appreciate having golden streets. It's too bright. I have astigmatism. It just makes my eyes painful. I don't think God is out there to torture people with astigmatism. But he was trying to tell us a point. He says, guys, the thing you've been spending your entire life chasing after, the jewels, the beauty, the goodness, all this, to me, are just construction materials. The more important thing is who is in heaven. It's Jesus who is waiting for you to have a relationship with him. That is what will truly satisfy what are you chasing after? God is also called Yahweh Rafa. Some of you have gone through painful experience in these recent months. Could it, it could be physically, it could be socially, it could be emotionally, mentally, relationally. And God is saying, I am the healer. I'm not the healer that existed only in the New Testament gospel. I'm not the healer that will heal the entire world when I come the second time. God is not someone who lived in the past or lived in the future. God defines himself by the article, I am. He said, I am the healer if you want me to heal you. That's why consistently in the gospel we see Jesus asking people that he heals the question, what do you want? What do you want? Sometimes we are looking for the solution and not wanting the solution. Like the person by the the pool of Siloam, he says, I want to get into the pool. But the bigger question is not whether I want the vaccine. The bigger question should be, I want health. And the world has covered our eyes and, and, and filled our brains so much so that we've lost track of what is the true thing that we're seeking for, that we should be looking for in our lives. God is also called Yahweh Nisi. He is the banner to be, re- to be brought up in terms of victory. He is your glory, is what Yahweh Nisi means. What are you glorifying yourself with? Is it your nice clothes? Is it the nice car? Is it the nice friends? Is it the nice place you go, the nice food you eat, the nice house you live in, the nice things you do, the kindness you show people? How do you display your glory? Do people, when they interact with you, when they see you, do they see Yahweh? Do they see Jesus? Do you, in what you do, clearly, clearly, intentionally, uniquely point people to God? Or more often, you're like me, when the glory, the things that I do, I point you not to my Lord, not to Yahweh Nisi, I point to myself. It's a trap that I oftentimes fall into. That I work hard, not because I want to glorify God, but I want to appear as a good pastor. I look at things that, oh, that's an expectation of what a pastor to, should do. You know, I get calls and says, Pastor, you have to come. And then I'll be like, oh, I have to go. I I have to go right now because that's what a good pastor would do. It's not a bad thing, but I've missed the point. 
Oh, there's people who need my prayer. I have to go because that's what the pastor should do. They should pray for people who are in need. But it should be whether God intends for this to be done. And so often that I, I, I think this is what I should do because of my role as the pastor, not as the son of God. I have to stop and pause and say, God, I'm going there because you've taught me to love people, not because it's my responsibility, but because it's who I should be, should the word again, as a person who's received your grace and mercy in my life, who've received salvation, and I'm sharing that as an expression of your love, not of my goodness. This is hard to pronounce. God is also called Yahweh Mikdash. Mikdash. He is also the sanctifier. If you think you're not good enough for God, if you think you've betrayed God or let Him down, God is saying, do not focus on your good deeds or your bad deeds. Focus on me because whatever you do or what you think you've done, count as nothing in front of me because it's not what you do that sanctifies you. It's who I am that sanctifies you. I am Yahweh Mikdash, which is related to his next name, Yahweh Sikhanu. <laughs> why, do, why is Hebrew so difficult? Yahweh Sikhanu, my righteousness. He not only sanctifies you, he not only clean you up and says, all right, take care of yourself. I've done my job. I've, I've washed you clean and now you better keep yourself clean. It's up to you now to be a good boy. If you get dirty again, don't say I've not cleaned you up. No, no, no. God's not saying that. God is saying, I clean you up and I'm going to keep you clean. I sanctify you to be in a right relationship with me and I'm going to be your righteousness. It's not your deeds. Those are not good enough. It's who I am that will be worthy of your righteousness. And God calls himself Yahweh Shalom. He is our peace. Life circumstance can, can try to take away our peace, but peace is not the absence of problems or trials or bad circumstance. Peace is that you know where you're sitting in in the midst of the storm. You know who's taking care of you. It's scary, you know, like, like Tiffany always complained about the rain we have in Singapore. She says in Taiwan, when this kind of rain comes, they call it typhoon. In Singapore, they just call it rain. Because I will be driving on the road and the, the rain will be hitting out like something's bucketing down on our car and I'll be like, yeah, that's normal. Yeah, three o'clock. At five o'clock, the rain will kind of stop and then it's just like, in Taiwan, if it's raining this way, we're not getting out of the house. It's called a typhoon. I'm like, eh, I like it. You know, cleans the car. I don't have to wash my car today. Um, it's not because I'm not afraid of rain or lightning. In fact, I've told you before that Singapore has the highest number of lightning strikes in the world. But yet, in Singapore, we don't think about it. We don't worry. <gasps> Would I be struck by lightning if I go out today? Even like people say, oh, we, we, I remember when we were younger in school, they said, if it rains, you got to run, don't hide, you, know, you got to squat down, keep yourself low, don't be near a tree, don't be, you know, don't be the tallest thing in the field, you'll be struck by lightning. You know, I, like, yeah, good idea. But you know, I don't think about it, not because I'm not afraid, but because I, 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 I know that there's like lightning conductors and the HDB flats are way taller than James. And if there's anything that's like, you know, street lights are way taller than James. And if anything, there's a lot of things that's taller than James. I don't have to be afraid. And especially, I love it being a, a thunderstorm in my car. I love just being in the middle of it. But it's not because I'm like crazy, but because I know the car is safe. Don't be shocked by lightning in the car. It's the safest place to be almost in the world, in the lightning storm. So God is our peace, not because there's no problems, not because there's no rain, no lightning, but because God is your shelter. God is your peace. God is also Yahweh Rohi. God is also your shepherd. God is also the one who will guide you and lead you along the path. That's what we always think about. He, he, he guides me along the path. But you know the Bible describes a shepherd. One of the most important attributes of the shepherd is he is the one who initiates the search for the lost. 
He's the one who will go and look for you. He's not asking you to look for Him. He's not waiting for you to look for Him, to come to Him before He'll grant you His presence. He initiates it. He came to this earth as a human being. He goes searching for you if you allow Him to be in your life. He's already there. God is called Yahweh Shammah, my abiding presence. The peace that God grants us, the sanctifying power that He grants us, the righteousness that He grants us, the love that He grants us, the creating power of sustenance that He grants us, is not a fleeting relationship. It's Him saying that I will be there and I will abide in your life continuously forever and ever and ever. See, God is called the I Am because He does not live in your past, nor does He only exist in your future but because He is in your present. And so as you ask yourself, who is God? Remind yourself that God is I am.
Let us pray. Father, we pray that you will be the I am in all of our lives, in the midst of Aztec, in the midst of this community, in the midst of every family represented. Lord, that you'll be our all in all be all, that you, we know that whatever needs, whatever wants, whatever thing we have in our life, that you are able. You're not restricted by the names given to you in the Bible, but even in the names as already presented and hundreds more, they are more than sufficient for our life. Lord, may we seek to know you and not just what you can give. We love you, God, and help us to love you more each day. Be with us this Sabbath day. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Join us again next week and keep praying for the church as we move forward back into having the physical service to this hybrid model of worshipping. For those of you who are still at home in the live stream, you will be able to continue to join us via whatever you've been joining us from. Thank you. Have a good Sabbath.